Frail Fragment is a music podcast, but we talk about movies, entertainment, sports, whatever's on our mind, open stream of consciousness, in awareness, and make things, making it a little comical on the side. Frail Fragments, Monster Classes. Hey, bro, good morning. Morning, bro, it's different. Yeah, I know, well, I decided, well, just to switch it up a bit, you know. Uh, yeah. We might jump on, back on later, but at least we could say we did it today. This is Monday, February 26, 2024. The mo- uh, new episode of the Monster Closet, episode 32. Monday morning. Uh, Monday morning. Um, it's going to be a nice day. It's like it's going to be 8 degrees, sun is shining. You know, I don't know what the fuck is up with this weather. And it's supposed to get like cold eventually too. I don't know. That's next week, man. What are you saying, bro? Uh-huh. Doing my thing. What's going bro? on, bro? Doing my thing. How about you? Uh, well, I got I caught the UFC on the weekend. Brian Ortega Did fucking... You? Oh he, fuck! He, I gave, he, what he checkmated that motherfucker, bruh. The fucking comeback, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. He almost got knocked out. <laughs> what a fucking idiot! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he like he almost he almost re- retired himself before the fight yeah. started just by jumping up and down. Holy but, fuck! And yeah, Brian Ortega's yeah. g- new girlfriend or his baby is that his baby mama? His wife. That's his wife, but yo, that uh, what's her face? The girl he left. Tracy they Cortez. Broke up. What about it? She was there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yo, bro, and there was like a crazy fight that broke out, bro. Hey, she went bruh. for broke for that one. That was probably awkward, bro. But I like she knows Tracy Cortez knows that she can kick that bitch's ass. Oh, buddy. And fucking Mexico, Mexico City was brawling, bro. I saw like some of the highlights. Like there was some fucking, there was a fight that broke out like crazy, bro. Oh yeah, and they let them. The, the fucking security, guys, Mexican security, don't play. <laughs> those guys are <laughs> fucked up, bro. Like during the World Cup, they jumped up and down so like so, oh, so much that they created a fucking natural earthquake, bro. In fucking Mexico. Mexico City, yeah. You know, eh. <laughs> Hey, bro, they, they don't play, bro. That's a big city, uh, man. Bro. That yeah, was a good UFC, too. bro. For free, bro, that was fucking... That was oh, dope, bro. That was so fucking, yeah. It was worth the watch, eh? Oh, yeah, bro. We Dude, stayed up to... I told you, bro, they're, they're behind us. Like, luckily, one of the fights got canceled. That guy with the weird fucking face. 18-year-old like a, Raul. Yeah, he looks like a 12-year-old. He got, yeah, like that <laughs> fight got Benjamin canceled, Biden. and we're happy because I mean the fucking main event was at like one o'clock in the morning, bro. Wasn't yeah, from seven that. to fucking ten o'clock, man. What the fuck you talking about, bro? I was popping Eddie's. So. Don't be spreading fa- fucking inf- false information. Yeah, yeah, I, I've had a few. You had a few, and you're fucking telling our fans that the fucking UFC starts at seven o'clock, like an asshole. What do you mean? It started at 7. You got so. It didn't start at fucking 7, dude. It didn't start at 7. It started at 8 o'clock. Preliminary started at 8 o'clock, and the fucking oh, yeah. UFC started at 10. Well, I'm talking about the night. The night started at 7, then. How was your, how was your night? You were at, you were at that fancy, fancy restaurant, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at the uh, Franco Bolo this uh, what, past weekend. What did you get to eat there? I just got the uh, pollo. And it was good. Pan-roasted chicken. There was yeah. pasta, several pastas. It was pretty good. I had some of my wives, but... Uh, have you ever been Have you ever been there before? I don't know. Mad expensive, though, bro. It's fucking on yeah. Avenue. That's why. Oh, yeah. Um, is it a small place or is it big? Uh, it's small, but once you get in, there's there's space. There's two floors, right? 
Okay, nice. And you you recommend it? <coughs> ah, for a one time date, you feel me? Yeah. Bring your lady, bring whoever, bring the fam. How much? That's it. How much do you need in your pocket to bring your lady there, bro? Just one and one. Uh, depends. You getting dessert too, then? Yeah. Let's say no, no dessert. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, make sure to bring a bill and a half. You heard? And, and that's just drinking water. Uh, or like a diet coke. You get one drink. For a hundred and seventy-five dollars <laughs> for a fucking bowl of pasta. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> bruh. Fucking red and dirty yeah, over here, bro. You're holding yeah. out on me, bro. Fucking inflation, bro. <laughs> yo, I heard fucking. Yo, the price of like steak in May is gonna like skyrocket up, bro. It's gonna be crazy. I heard bro. red meat, red meat, eh? We're gonna be like lions and tigers out there trying to kill some fucking wild yeah. game, bro. You know what I mean? A fucking tomahawk <laughs> from your local fucking butcher. H- hunting in fucking halibut in this summer, bro. For some fucking red meat, bro. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna bring up the that machetes. That's that shit's expensive these days, bro. Uh, I wonder why. Why is barbecue season expensive right now? Because they had a fucking drought. Like there was, it didn't rain, bro. It didn't fucking, fucking rain, rain bro. Because of the fucking. fucking animals extinct. What the fuck? Global warming. <laughs> oh, this fucking Not red mean? meat shit. Would you eat lab-grown meat, Lenny? Uh, no. Well, I mean, if it's gonna save my life and like it's yeah. guaranteed yeah. to be fucking like safe, yeah. all the preservatives and shit, yeah, why not, bro? That should be the future, man. Because I hear saying. like I, from what I hear, like red meat is a big problem with like eating red meat. It's a big problem with global warming. You have like factory farming. You have like waste going into the fucking oceans. You have trees being cut down for for you know meat farming, uh, and we don't. The world doesn't have we don't have enough trees so right. we're, we're that's kind of the problem global warming is happening because we don't have enough trees and we're and we're polluting the fuck out of this place right and then we're digging oil and we're burning that so we're like taking the blood out of the earth and then we're 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 smoking it I heard about that. <laughs> it's fucking up yeah. our beef man well it's fucking up our sh- our, our pocket bruh oh, fuck, our bro. paper bruh Imagine, yeah. yeah. That shit's a reality, bro. You don't have to imagine shit. Oh. You feel? What John Lennon say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that guy got his fucking head blown off, bro. Was it part of his that's deal? When, that's what keeping it real goes wrong, bro. You hang up, <laughs> you fucking hook up with the wrong fucking bitch, bro. <laughs> no, she didn't get him killed. Yoko Ono? Come on. She changed the world. Fucking box office poison, bruh. Bruh? That girl was a f- that girl dragged that guy through the mud still, bruh. Musically anyway. You mean like Medusa? But, but he loved her, right? So maybe his spirit became well his spirit did become happy, right? So because I mean, she was sucking his dick the right way or doing a few things, you know, that he liked. Nah, I mean, she controlled his soul. But, but musically, that guy, like, went off after fucking... Day. Like, she, she became, the like, Beatles. the fucking fifth member of the Beatles, you know what I mean? She Fuck. was telling the fucking band... She was trying to tell the band what to do. This is from what I hear, anyway, but... I mean, Paul McCartney's not having that shit, right? He went off on his own. He did Wings, and he did really well with Wings. Because Paul McCartney is a fucking... One of the best songwriters in rock and roll of our generation, right? A living I, legend, I think, Lenny. I think he's better than John Lennon, like, in my opinion. Like, right, he did... Right. He wrote the fucking James Bond fucking theme song in 10 minutes. Da na na, 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 da na na
He wrote that in fucking 10 yeah, minutes yeah, on yeah. a piano in like two seconds, bro. That guy wrote so many fucking. That guy was incredible, and he's an amazing singer, bro. Show some shine some fucking respect on his name, bro. They were also listen to fucking shit. Right? Fucking crap. What? They were on bath salts. Yeah, bro. Well, they they experimented with drugs like in the late 60s, and then they just went like all out with like helter skelter and like the white yeah, album was, was cool i liked revolt oh, well for me i don't know i liked all the beatles albums man like but i liked revolver a lot i liked the white album a lot i yeah, liked yeah. Uh, sergeant sergeant pepper a lot yeah and honestly their last album wasn't like it was kind of cool too but uh yeah. you know but then you that. got like you know, their first album is like has like fucking twist and shout and shit on it, right? So they they went fucking through their bangers. fucking well, twist and shout is is like what we would consider the Backstreet Boys or Britney Spears right now, right? But I mean, right. they're pop. It's pop fucking fifties shit or sixties. But once they experimented with drugs, they started writing some really fucked up rock and roll music, right? Um, uh, Yellow submarine joint for show. Eh, hey, bruh. Well, Yellow Submarine was the uh, only song written uh-huh. by R- by Ringo Starr, the drummer, and he fucking sucked, man. And people love- kissed that guy's ass, and he's, I mean, like, he was in the right place at the right time because you know really? John to work with John Lennon and Paul McCartney, Buddy. you know, um, George down, Harrison man. was George Harrison was good, but but he was still lucky to work with those two guys because those two guys are like pretty much the best songwriters of of ever. To play rock and roll music, right? So, Paul McCartney yeah. and John Lennon together in the Beatles were the best, right? <clears throat> Unstoppable, then. But I mean, you have better players. Like, if you get Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin would take that band oh. and rip their fucking ass open because oh. Led Zeppelin aren't aren't the best writers. But I mean, uh-huh. you take John Bonham playing fucking drums, and that guy will fucking. Ringo Starr can't shine that fucker's shoes, bro. You know, and then you have you have John Paul Jones on bass and keyboard. That guy, rhythm like rhythm wise, is fucking he's next level. And then you have Jimmy Page, and in my opinion, in pop culture, is by far the Jimmy best Page. fucking guitar by the best guitarist of all time, bro. Right, no, like I that guy. Can play. Shut up, man. Cobain's my guy. That guy can. Well, we'll get to Cobain, but Jimmy Please. Page. Can, Jimmy Page can write. Uh, well, he could play. He's a good acoustic player. He's a good electric player. He's a dark yeah. fucking guitar player. Like his his style. So it's all subjective, and I really like uh, Jimmy Page's style. Um, and he's my favorite guitarist. And if I go my top five, yeah, I would go uh, Jimmy Page number one, uh, Jimi Hendrix number two, Hendrix. Uh, you know, I like David Gilmore right, from you. Pink Floyd too. Pink Floyd, and, yeah, classic. Uh, because he was, his solos were very emotional. Okay. And he had really, really uh, solid guitar sounds, man. So I really liked. I would put him number three, and number four, I'd probably give to Santana because he can go from like jazz to rock and roll to whatever, oh, and he's yeah. amazing. And you know, he. Did, yeah, you know, and uh, and then number five, I'd go like Eric Clapton. But this is my, you know, five really? because wow. Je- Jeff Jeff Beck is better than Eric Clapton. But I mean, I just like Eric Clapton's songs. I, I you know, I like the way he plays acoustic guitar. So it's all subjective. You could throw Van Halen in there. Awesome. There's some people that could say Van Halen is number one, right? Van Halen, yeah. But getting to getting to Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain isn't a guitarist. He's a songwriter. What? Right, so he he's like in the same realm as Neil Young or Tom Petty or like those guys. He's not some guitar fucking cr- god, right? He's more of a songwriter god, right? Like he kind of broke the mold uh, writing songs, not playing fucking guitar, man. Get your fucking shit together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. But Kurt Cobain is the reason why why I play play guitar, right? Like exactly. when I first I was listening to fucking hip hop, bro, in like grade four, 
And grade uh, five, yeah. like, I mean, grade five, it was kind of like Onyx and Black Sheep and fucking Cypress Hill. And I think the Biggie album just dropped right around oh, then. Yeah. And, or that came a little bit after. I think that came grade six. But my dad, I don't know. He just said, you know, there's more to fucking life than this shit. Here's fucking, and he went, he had like a, 700 cds in his collection like he just pr- prided himself on collecting cds in the early 90s and he gave me pearl jam 10 and nirvana never mind and i put off pearl jam 10 first and i'm like holy fuck this is like <clears throat> the greatest shit i've ever heard and then i put on never mind and it like it topped that and my world was changed at that moment like i just my whole focus um, became Nirvana and and Pearl Jam, right? And that and I ran to my friend's house and I, you know, t- showed him, and he bought a guitar. And then I convinced my dad to buy me a guitar within a year, I think, an acoustic guitar, and uh, and I started playing music, at, you know, from that point, right? So Kurt Cobain had a lot; he had everything to do with that. So he was like the staple for me. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of. That's kind of it, man. I and that's uh, we did it. We we actually had a really good interview with uh, Doctor T on the Doctor T show, Taylor North, yesterday. Uh, he came in and he talked to Frail Fragment for a while at Primal Note Studios before we did our music video. Uh, you know, last night. So it was a late night for me, but I mean, uh-huh. no pain, no gain, and uh, we had a lot to talk about. Uh, you should check out Doctor T's show. He has a lot of cool shit, man. Like, he has this fucking 4K camera that you can plug into your cell phone, dude. Like, it just attaches to your cell phone. It's fucking awesome. And then your cell phone becomes, like, your screen that you can see out of, and the camera is filming at 4K. And the camera has a light and everything. He says it's, like, 400 bucks. Bro, I'm going to fucking lowball somebody on fucking Facebook and get that shit for 200 Fucking get that shit. And then he... And then he has the recorder I use. So if you have those two things, bro, you can have a professional fucking podcast via cell phone. Dude. Feel, Dude. You feel? Dude. Yeah, like, so, I mean, and the video shoot went good, man. It was, like, a lot of yeah. work. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm fucking tired, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had a good time. Big up to fucking Ben Rathburn from Primal Note Studios. Uh, you know, the artwork there is really cool. They have a really cool lobby when you walk in that place. It looks sick, man. So we did that, the Dr. T show in the front. And we did the, the video in, in the back of the fucking at Primal Note Studios. So that Dufferin and Eglinton, I'm going to big them up again because that uh, Ben Rayburn really fucking helped us out, you know, making this video for us. Uh, so Primal Note Studios, Dufferin and Eglinton Central Area. Go check them out. Um, they do music videos there. We did a music video there. Um, it was a pretty good weekend though. Like I took my son uh, on Sunday. Well, my daughter has dance on Saturdays, so uh-huh. she went to fucking dance, and then she went to ballet, and then I mean, we kind of I think we just yeah we kept it cool, and then uh, Sunday, my da- my son has soccer, and my daughter has cooking. And uh, we after that, I, I you know we had dinner and I went to the video shoot and I got back. Right, it was a long fucking day, but uh, now I have a couple of weeks of just laying low. My my wife's birthday is on March fourth, so I gotta kind of okay. you know work out something to do there. I bought tickets for um, oh, you better. the the Jurassic Park experience. Oh yeah, for Fuck. for March break on the Monday, so I'm gonna take my family to to that, and then Tuesday and Wednesday. I know. <laughs> That's the only problem. They're going to fucking mess it. Yeah. But uh, itty what itty, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a uh, good experience, man. And then uh, Tuesday, they're going back to their daycare and Wednesday because uh, oh. there's, it's kind of like a little reunion thing. And it'll give my wife and I like a couple of days just to fucking chill. So we're going to like, you know, go out for breakfast and because I'm on vacation, right? Walk around Yorkdale or something, you know, do something. Just, like, have no kids for, like, five hours. And uh, so that's going to happen uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday, I'm I'm thinking about going to the aquarium okay, downtown. Right, yes. 
I took my daughter, but my son hasn't seen it yet. So, you know, I want to take him. Yeah, it's it's good. And then uh, on Friday, I'm going to go to Hamilton to Disney on Ice. Okay. And then Saturday and Sunday is just kind of like getting back into the swing of things, visiting some family maybe, and, you know, that's it. But um, the Saturday before my vacation, I requested a float day because we're going to have like a fucking banger party in Brampton. So that's going to be sick, bro. Like, uh, you know, it's a long time coming. And when I meet up with uh, my boy Dilly there, uh, Frel Fragment's ex-drummer, we party hard, bro. You know what I mean? Nice. So it's long overdue. We're going to get some carne asada with yeah. some fucking uh, sa- sausage, picante, chorizos, picante. Uh, with some rice, you know, tortilla. Uh, the green Ross. Ross. Si. And okay. some cerveza. <laughs> some ceviche. You make your own? Claro. Claro que si. Comprende. Puto. <laughs> Pendejo. Um, yo, uh, so yeah, like once I get this so, Primal Note fucking um, studio video, you know, I'm going to, I can't wait to share it with you all. Keep it locked to frailfragment.com, at frailfragment and all your social medias. Swag. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to, we'll, we'll check in with you guys at some point, uh, you know, this week for sure. Hey. And keep it real in the streets. Have a good week, guys. Enjoy this weather, all right? Frailfragment.com. Right. Frail Fragments, The Monster Closet. This is episode 32. We out of this bitch. Peace. Poppy out. Frail fragments, monster classes. <laughs>